God would want that praise. Then Psalm 89, verse 7, it says, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about Him. So Jesus Christ, He's the true reverend. He's the true reverend. You know, we have some pastors in Anna Valley and, oh, call me reverend so-and-so. Uh, actually, Jesus Christ is the true reverend. He, you're going to revere Him one day, whether you like it or not. You're going to bow the knee to Him. But thirdly, what do we find from the Philistines in verse 5 there, 1 Samuel 6, 5, is peradventure relief. What we're looking at, they're not Calvinists. Peradventure, He will lighten His hand from off you and from off your gods and from off your lands. Now think of all the lands conquered in the book of Joshua. How many of those lands cried out for mercy, acknowledging the Lord, He is God? How many of those conquered lands cried out for mercy, acknowledging the Lord, He is God, the Lord, He is God? Well, I can't think of one. That's why they got conquered. Isn't that interesting? Now, I understand the whole land grant. And I'm not, you know me, I'm not, I believe God meant that land grant to Israel. But I don't believe all those folks in Canaan necessarily had to be destroyed. I think if they would have cried out for mercy, I believe God would have found a way. He would have given them mercy somehow. And the Gibeonites is my case in point. They wanted mercy. They wanted acceptance from God and God's people. And God, even if, though it wasn't, I'm not saying it was a perfect way they got it. But how'd you come down the road? How was your life in your BC days? Was it perfect? Didn't God have to make a couple uh, exceptions for you? I think so. But peradventure relief. Now, uh, there was only one people that through trickery uh, and God's grace, they were able to make that league. It was the people of, the, of Gibeah. And you find that in Joshua 9.15. It says, And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. Now, you should all know of a day or a time that you made peace with God, calling out in repentance to, that, to the Lord Jesus Christ and begging for an exception. You should all know of the time. Maybe you don't know the day. I'm not going to put that one on you. I'm not going to expect you to walk around with your little membership card of when the day you got saved. And you know, we've had folks pull out cards. And do I know do do I know I'm saved? They pull out a card and show me a card. Isn't that interesting? That local churches would hand out those and that's interesting to me. And that even this guy, you hope they, I'm guessing, know better, but this guy literally pulls out the card. This is how I know I'm saved, my card. Do you have your card? You have yours? Is it a Visa or a MasterCard? I mean, what's the limit? No, nah, anyway. But you should all know of a time when you came to the Lord begging for an exception. And then Christ coming to you, he looked at your tattered, rag clothing, and as we talked about, he, he revealed all of your lies, all of your layers of years of falsehood, sinfulness, and He still kept His word toward you. But my word to you is this. Maybe you today, Christian, maybe you need some relief. Maybe you need some relief. Maybe you're just going through it. There is nobody in this room that understands what you're going through. There's nobody in your home that understands what you're going through. And I'm telling you, Jesus knows exactly what you're going through. And sometimes He might send those things to you just for your and His relationship, period. Because He just sits back like, I know I'm the only one that could help Him with this one. I know I'm the only one. You know, and they've been leaning on the brethren here, leaning on the brethren here, leaning on family here, finances here, uh, maybe their good upbringing here. Uh, whatever folks depend on, and God just goes, dink, 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 dink. And that, then He sends something into your life, and He's like, I know I'm the only one that can help him with this one. I'm waiting. Well, you're saying, well... <laughs> Yeah, he does that to Christians too. I'm saying he does that to Christians. What what was his name in the Old Testament? Capital J, jealous. 
His name is jealous. He's jealous for your time. Jealous for your thoughts. Jealous for your finances. Jealous for your friendship. Jealous for your prayers. Jealous, man. Maybe you need that relief. And I'm telling you, per adventure, <laughs> you could get some relief. If God showed you a couple ways to do it, a few words in prayer to do it, would you do it? Well, it can't be that easy. You haven't tried. You haven't tried. Well, I don't want to pray here. What if you're not given another chance? A family that prays together stays together. Doesn't that uh, go with the church too? Oh, well, that's not Bible. It's biblical. It's biblical. Can a church pray together? Matthew eleven twenty eight. Jesus Christ says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you need rest today? I think we know someone that can help you with it. It's not me. <laughs> I, I, wish, I wish I could help most of you folks. You know, the fact is, I get a lot of more help, I believe, than I probably help you guys when I come here. You guys are a huge encouragement to me and my family. And, uh, but I know who, who could help you. Jesus. And when, I, when I'm at my darkest, sometimes he flicks all the things I depend on, too. And he's like, I know Randy's got to come to me now. And I come with my tail between my legs and... Hi, Lord. Been a while. Been a while since we talked. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, come up here. Sit on Papa's lap. <laughs> you know, and then we cry, Abba, Father, don't we? Let's go ahead and stand. Do you harden your hearts today? Maybe Jesus Christ is... It sure wasn't my preaching. I know that much. But maybe the Lord put something on your heart that today He wanted you to get real with Him on a subject. You should do it before you leave, don't you think? What better time? What better place? Well, I'm going to have to get kind of uh, vulnerable in front of the brethren. Do it. Do it. If you can't get right with God in a church, of all places, where can you get right with God? I'm not saying anything about... You guys know it's not about the building. I get that. But if it's not going to be here and now, where's it going to be? Where's it going to be? Let's, um, I want to just give you folks just a few moments just to pray to the Lord. And maybe God has not put anything on your heart. It wouldn't hurt to ask if there's anything that might be between you and Him. It wouldn't hurt. Just take a few moments and ask God if there be anything. And if there is, you, you can kneel at your chair. You can... Uh, if you need to kneel up here, like in an altar call, that's fine too. We're not going to sit here and laugh at you. We're not going to call you names. Do something with the Lord right now.